I think it's okay, it's live. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> hey Catherine, lovely to meet you. And you know, I'd never even heard about you until I saw what was happening on your page over the weekend. And when I saw people giving you a little bit of flack, I thought, well, hang on, you guys don't know anything about this protocol. You don't know you know, what it's about. So first of all, I'll introduce who I am. I'm Cindy O'Meara, I'm a nutritionist. I created the Four Face Fat Elimination Protocol based on a 1950s protocol that was done by Dr. Simeon in a book called Pounds and Inches. But because the 1950s, 60s and 70s are so different to today, I modified it extremely um, in, in changing how we did things. So first of all, Catherine, everybody knows who you are because it's your Instagram page and congratulations, you did a brilliant job. You obviously have stuck to it and done it the correct way. Yes, I follow the protocol very exactly um, because I don't think it, as far as I, I knew, I read the original research and um, the original Pounds and Inches book as well. Um, and so my real understanding was if you're going to do the protocol, then you really have to commit to it 100%. Yeah. And I think what people don't realize is that if you do not commit to it, then what ends up happening is that you'll just end up where you were when you started. So you can do the four phases, but if you don't then learn from the fourth phase, which I know that you're going into probably in the next three or four days, if you don't learn from and you go back to your old ways, then you're gonna end up where you were. So I think anybody is a little bit delusional if they think that they can go on a protocol, change their um, dietary requirements and do what they need to do, do the whole thing, and then lose the weight, feel fantastic, and then go back to their old ways. And you're there because of the, the actions you've been doing, you know, and yeah, we know that, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely, and I think that's, that was the the biggest part was understanding the the time commitment involved and the kind of mental change that would be required that once i did this program that i would be eating differently potentially for the rest of my life um because uh i i had told people you know i found this through my sister my sister did it um early last year and she had discovered sensitivities to foods that she'd eaten all her life um you know, things like eggs, which, you know, you, you often don't ever think of as a culprit. Um, and she found it, she actually had a real sensitivity to, um, it was very inflaming for her whenever she ate them. And so I was a little bit scared to do it because I was a bit scared to find out what doesn't work for me in case it was things like eggs, uh, things I really enjoy eating. Um, so I it was like, it was almost a mental preparation. I think I bought the kit almost a year ago um, and had been sitting in my cupboard uh, waiting for me to sort of be ready to actually commit to to the program and uh, to the change um, in the food. Mm. So tell me, um, what was it like the first week for you in phase, once you'd gotten through phase one and you hit into phase two? Yeah, phase one, and that was really fun. Um, yeah. Phase one, for anyone who doesn't know, is a loading phase where you're having a lot of good fat. So um, I had some very nice uh, creamy, uh, avocado-y type dishes that were really tasty. Um, so week one was really interesting. I was kind of prepared for sugar cravings. I've been eating sort of a lot of sugar sort of up to doing the program. And so I was sort of braced for that more than anything um, and being hungry. I was, I think I was scared, you know, I would feel like real hunger. Um, and actually what was kind of shocking to me is that I kept saying to everyone who I was working with and, and who knew I was doing it, I kept saying, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry. In fact, to the point for the first three days, I actually struggled to eat the recommended servings. Um, I've never had, like there's three servings of fruit that you can have um, a day. I've never had more than two servings of fruit. I never feel like I'm hungry. Um, and I've never had a single sugar craving, which was really strange. And I can't really explain it, but all I could put it down to was, was sort of the drops and, and the, the diet I was having. I was very focused on making sure I had a lot of um, the leafy greens um, because they're an unlimited food on the protocol um, and tomato, which I'm, isn't inflammatory for me. 
and onion and things that made uh, my dishes tasty. But I really kept sort of waiting to feel hungry and then it just never happened. Mm. Um, so it was more of a mental challenge. Like, you know, you're having pretty much around 500 calories a day and yet somehow, you know, you're not feeling hunger pains and I wasn't craving any kind of sweet. Um, and I didn't know if that was because I didn't really eat a lot of fruit before the program and having sort of, I was having blueberries and an apple in as, as an afternoon snack, whether that was actually helping me get through that, that sugar, the, whatever the need for the sweet. And so you prepared well, you, cause I find that if you organize and you prepare well, then what will happen is that you will um, succeed. It's so it, it's it's so funny because we have a coach. I don't know if you use the coach Mel throughout. Yeah, Mel, yeah. yeah Mel's wonderful. So um, she she'll say to me sometimes she'll go, "See, you know, I had this lady say that she's gaining weight, she's not losing weight." And I mean, that's just impossible. Ask her what her diet's like. So she comes back with cappuccinos, and um, I think she was having chicken sandwiches and things like that, and. And Mel said to her, did you read the diet? Did you read what you had to do? And the woman said, well, no, I just thought I had to take the drops. <laughs> so I think it's important that people read it. They, they like the diet and the drops. Yeah. Um, and, and absolutely the, the biggest challenge was being prepared. I went from someone who probably like bought my lunch every day um, to having to make my own food. And the only times I've been kind of caught out, so to speak, is when I haven't left myself enough time to prepare my meals. And so I started learning to, to make, you know, food for dinner that there's enough for, for lunch the next day um, and having things to hand because that's the, the only time that it is challenging. It's, it's a, a really simple diet. Um, and so you really have to, to have the foods on hand and make them yourself. So that was, that was probably... The biggest thing, and I've actually, I have enjoyed that because one of the things I wanted to do was encourage myself to make my own food. And so by doing this, I've been forced to, to be in my kitchen. Um, and I'm actually now sort of enjoying trying. And as you said, being prepared, I went onto the Facebook group and also onto the website forum, which is sort of moved to the Facebook group. And I read through all the posts that people had done and their recipe suggestions and I bought the HCG recipe book that someone had created. And I went on the Skinny Mixers website who um, also have HCG recipes. And so I really uh, tried to, to prepare myself as much as possible, arm myself with information around ideas for food and what you can eat. Because I think initially you look at this list and you're like, well, what will I eat? What, what can you make with these ingredients? But actually there's an enormous variety of food. I've Never felt bored in that sense with not being able to have um, some really interesting meals. So apart from the obvious physical weight loss that you've had, have you had anything else that's um, happening, like as far as your health goes? Are you, are you seeing anything there? Absolutely. I think one of the biggest changes has been probably mental clarity. Um, you know, like I think there's that like kind of foggy state where you sort of, wake up in the morning and sort of drag yourself out of bed and you always feel a little bit tired, like you didn't get enough sleep, even though I usually get sort of eight hours sleep a night. Um, and I really have started sort of naturally waking up um, after maybe more like sort of seven hours, seven and a half, and feeling really alert and quite energetic. Um, and one of the suggestions on the protocol is not to sort of do vigorous exercise um, because that's it's challenging when you're doing a, a sort of a low calorie diet like this. But I was doing like a one hour yoga sessions five days a week um, for the first few weeks while doing this diet because I actually had a lot of energy. Um, mm. And so I, I felt that the increase in energy and also I think it was uh, mentally calming because you're on quite – a bland diet. I wasn't sort of on like a diet high and low of the sugar rush and the sugar crash and things like that. So for me, it was quite relaxing. Mm. I find that also when I, I've done it twice now and um, and two years apart, and there were reasons for that, and um, we'll talk about that later. But I just found it a a really calming time. I don't know what it does, but it seems to create that calming. So apart, so you had. Um, 
unbelievable weight loss and you also had amazing clarity of mind. Can you tell us what happened in that first week? Um, were there dramatic changes in your weight in that first week and then did it slow or did you just, you know, how did that work for you? Uh, it was pretty dramatic in the first week. I think the first week I lost nearly three kilograms, which was pretty huge. But I did feel that, I mean, part of the reason that I kind of looked so much smaller suddenly, I think, is because I was holding a lot of bloat because inflammation kind of retains water in your body. And I had really been eating a diet. Um, well, things I actually know that I really don't, don't agree with me, like a lot of wheat, um, and sort of sugary products. And so my body, I feel, was quite inflamed. And so it wasn't potentially necessarily completely just like all three kilos of fat, but sort of losing that water weight um, sort of shrunk me quite dramatically, I think, in the first week. And it is obviously very motivating when you, you do see the results on the scale. Um, and also you're not feeling hungry, so you're like, well, actually, I, could, I can make this happen. I can continue with this. And then the sort of the second week was probably a slow down. It was maybe a sort of a kilo and a half, two kilos. Um, and it really sort of was a sort of a, they say there's often a step um, weight loss where you kind of only lose 100 grams or even stay the same weight for a day or two. And then like you lose four or 500 grams. And I found that sort of has started happening now. So mm -hmm. I was, yeah, sort of, slowly lose and then you sort of have what they call a big loss. So like I lost a pound yesterday, it was 500 grams off the scale. Today it was another 300. Um, but tomorrow might be the same weight and then the day after that would be a change. So it's, you can't quite predict it, but they, they say on the Facebook group, you know, it's really to focus on that sort of loss over all. And in the end, seven kilos in 21 days is a, an enormous amount of weight. Um, I have not actually been lighter than this since I was in my 30s, and that's, I'm 36. So this is the lowest weight I've been. <laughs> yay, yay. And, and then it's about um, what you'll be heading into is, is phase three and then phase four. Phase three is only a couple of days, um, and, and then phase four is when you start to challenge the foods. And most people find that there are foods that are affecting them, and, um, and you usually find that by you'll challenge yourself with food and you'll get on the scales and if you've gained 400, 500, 600, I know some people that gain three kilos of water weight in an evening, one evening. They'll wake up the next morning and they'll put it on. And they're usually people who started <laughs> and have a glass of wine um, on phase four. And because the wine doesn't agree with them, um, there might be another alcohol that may agree with them, but because the wine doesn't agree with them, they'll put that on. And, and um, it's so important to just watch that in the beginning as to um, what you're eating and only introduce a few things. So we have a system for you to run through, as, as you know, with the, within the book. And, you, and we give you the least inflammatory foods to start with and then we go into the inflammatory foods. So do you think you know at this point what may be causing um, the puff? We used to call it the puff. So people look yeah. puffy. A, good for it. <laughs> a bit of puff on you. <laughs> um, you know, I once, I had the blood test done where they tested my intolerances and um, I came back as intolerant to things like shrimp, um, pretty much all grains. Uh, there were a few vegetables, some weird things like bears, garlic, which I'd never even heard of, so I'm barely safe. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to kind of like sort of test out the things that my blood test said I was intolerant to. Um, but I mean, the things I suspect for me are, are more around, I, I'm really curious whether um, things like avocado or um, things I have in my diet a lot, I guess. I'm like, I'm wondering if there's like sort of some sort of thing that I eat on a regular basis that I think I'm fine with that I'm hoping being doing this testing um, and the, the sort of the slow introduction will actually show me if, if that's a problem or whether it has actually just been the obvious all along, which has been sort of refined sugar products and, and sort of wheat um, and other grains. And, and maybe that's it. Um, but... I will say that, you know, that doing the phase four, when I very initially heard about this diet, when I was, guess, watching my sister sort of, 
she lost about seven kilos as well, but she started off quite a lot lighter than me. And um, she, I was just like, oh, well, I just want the weight loss. You know, I don't, I don't really care about the philosophy behind the program. I was just like, oh, great. Well, it's a really fast way to, to lose weight. Um, and then it was really when I was reading it and then actually understanding this is really about resetting my body, um, you know, bringing myself back into leptin sensitivity. Um, so my hormonal balance is actually not retaining fat and is actually my metabolism is optimum level. And the only way to do that is, is through diet. And it's like we all know the impact diet has on our bodies, but it's kind of like I think I lived a lot in denial. Like you sort of like you really want to believe that somehow you can just lose the weight and then go back to eating whatever you want. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, just like, it's just not the case. And it's kind of like it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to let that that go um, and not have that sort of. And I've always talked about on my Instagram my emotional um, eating and my emotional connection to food and that sort of pleasure pain. Um, relationship that you have with it and to move to a place where you're looking at it as nutrition and fuel um, but also still being able to enjoy it and it's it's sort of it's a it's a real mental process I think more than anything else when you're doing any of these things to to challenge your own thinking and your own beliefs around food and because food is available 24 hours a day seven days a week for us and we're not um, living like the hunter-gatherer lived where the food was available a lot in the, in the summer months but in the winter it became very scarce. Um, we don't have that ebb and flow happening with us, you know, and we do not have a winter um, with our food and we find there are many people like this. But one of the things that where you know, I've realised over the last 10 years and I've been a nutritionist for 32 years is that many young women um, and, and some young men, but more young women are having real gut issues. So um, that's one of the things that when um, we're finished talking, I'm going to continue talking and um, go through people that I feel need to be cautious um, of this protocol or, you know, um, look at another protocol first, fix that, then they can do that. this next protocol, which I've had people do before. So... The, the, you know, there's, I, I saw you got a lot of flack on Instagram. I saw you get a lot of support, but I also saw you get a lot of flack. And um, how, did, how did you go with that? How, how did you handle that? You know, I'm, it's definitely very difficult because obviously um, I really care about the, the people who follow me and I only want to give people sort of, I guess, good information. And when people are sort of accusing you of, of promoting sort of, of something that's a fraud or it's actually unhealthy for people, um, that that is actually very, very difficult because my experience is that this is actually something that is improving my health um, and not taking um, that away. And so it's very hard to, to manage that in terms of everyone is always going to have their opinions and... I absolutely appreciate that if someone had come to me and I remember when someone, I think when my sister initially told me what she was doing and she's, the moment anyone says the words 500 calorie a day, that's it. You're like, well, that's just stupid. No one should be doing a, that kind of diet. It will ruin your metabolism. Everyone knows this, um, you know, and, and they sort of just want to, that's it and end of story. But when I read about sort of the idea of the hunter gatherer, and I do sort of my my parents actually are paleo, so um, I've been exposed to these ideas for a long time, and I really believe um, that our physiology is is still based around that sort of primitive um, sort of hunter gatherer system that we haven't sort of evolved our bodies to the point where we're somehow just past all of those those sort of prim sort of whatever, primal urges or primal instincts that our, that our body responds to. So it made a lot of sense to me, this idea of this winter of scarcity versus the sort of the summer of, of abundance and that our body, you know, does need a break and there is sort of a response within the body when we, we put ourselves into that state um, that is that sort of reset. And so... It's hard for me, I guess, because I don't feel like I'm, a, I'm not a qualified nutritionist. I, 
I probably struggle to really coherently explain to people um, exactly why I, I believed in the diet. But in the end, I'm sharing my experience. I've had like an amazing success on the program so far. And, you know, I, as I sort of said to everyone, like I'd never told changing habits that I was doing it. I just bought the kit um, and started the program um, just like everybody else. Uh, so it wasn't some sort of marketing ploy um, or promotional um, sort of activity for changing habits. You know, you only found out because I posted on Instagram. Uh, so I used to, it is absolutely challenging um, when people don't like what I do. Uh, but in the end, like I've said to people, it's my body, it's my health, and I think I'm doing something that's actually really good for my health long term. And also, to it's it's a four phase program. There's one phase where there is a calorie restriction, which has a very focused purpose. And also, I have eaten more fruit and vegetables in the last three weeks than I have eaten probably this year. Um, you know, all the things that people are always saying are really great for you to have in your diet, like lean proteins and leafy greens. And I've actually been eating them consistently when I could easily have probably gone days without a touching a piece of fruit um, or having a leafy green besides, you know, some lettuce or something. So I, I feel like it's actually been a really healthy thing. It's been detoxifying for my body, but also really giving it a lot, probably more nutrients than it's used to getting because also I've been doing the supplements. So um, I feel like having sort of all of those extra things has really given me that boost. And those supplements, um, I want to let everybody know, are actually food. So we use a green powder, colloidal, a probiotic, and uh, we do a camu camu, which is um, vitamin C. So they're all based from food. They're not coming from a chemical laboratory. They're not in pill form. They're all in food form. And um, we do it as a shot in the morning just to make sure we're getting that nutrition that we need despite maybe not getting the calories. But then having said that, what happens is that the body, when you deprive it of um, the food, you know, we've given a little bit of protein and we've given it lots of greenery because they are our free foods almost, so we give it a lot of that and, and what ends up happening is that um, and with the help of the homeopathic drops and a lot of people had a lot of issues about the homeopathic drops and, and what I'd like to say here is is that Prozac works more as a placebo than it does as a drug. And let's just say the homeopathics, if for those people who don't agree with this, that the homeopathics are more of a placebo than they are a drug or, or they're not really a drug then so be it. But when you understand the energetics behind these homeopathics and you understand, um, and the person that makes these for me, he lives near me um, and he's the only one that knows the formula for them. There is no um, um, pregnant horse's urine or anything in it. We use only energetics. That's all we use. And like I said, if, if um, people want to take it and think it's, a, you know, the placebo effect, well, you know, people take Prozac and it works, the, the placebo works better than the Prozac. So um, let's just leave it at that because there's just so many people that have so many opinions about homeopathy. But the thing about it is that it's the HCG, the, um, the energetics of the HCG, which all of us make in minute amounts, but more so in the winter and when we're pregnant. And what it does is it tells the body there's not enough calories, we need to survive, let's pull up our HCG and let's pull out that fat that you've stored in the summer that we need in order to survive the winter. And that's, it's, everyone thinks it's low calorie and low fat, but in actual fact it's high calorie and high Fat because we're just accessing what you've been eating long before um, that you've been storing. And so what, the reason why you're not hungry is that, is that we've, we've pulled up your reserves when we do the phase one. So we pull up reserves and we have so much fun doing that. And then we go on the no fat um, consuming with our mouth and, and that then enables us to use the fat that we've stored previously. And, it works a treat because you don't get hungry. That's what blew me away is that for three weeks I was never hungry. How were you? I, I can genuinely say I 
never felt hungry. Besides just like when you're just like, oh, it's time for lunch kind of hunger. But that, you know, sort of whining like, oh, I have an empty stomach, like I'm not getting enough food hunger. I never felt it. And that's probably of everything. I agree. Like people believe in homeopathy or not. I am a believer in it. I've seen it work for, for many people in my life, including myself. But I never felt hungry. And there was no explanation for that besides mm -hmm. the fact that I was taking these drops. And I really believe that those fat stores were really fueling me and fueling my body. And that's why I wasn't feeling the hunger. Um, and I really can't think of another explanation for it. Because if anyone just wants to be like, well, you're on 500 calories a day, I'm pretty sure you're hungry. In fact, I have a friend who does the 5-2 diet, which is a diet where two days a week you do eat 500 calories of a fast. Um, mm. And she was telling me how irritable she is that entire day, how starving, um, you know, how she really struggles so much to do it twice a week. And I was really kind of braced for any of that and, and, and none of it happened. And the only difference between her doing that 500 calories and me is, is the fact that I was taking these drops. And you did it for three weeks, not two days. And actually um, going to the 5-2 diet, Michael Molesley, I think his name is, the, the doctor that created the 5-2 diet and the fasting diet, he basically says is that we've shown that motivation and inspiration for someone um, and keeping the weight off and I, you know, I would never have agreed with this five years ago, but I do now after doing it, is that that's the way to keep it off forever, is to do it fast and do it um, you know, rigor, rigorously. Uh, and that's what they've seen, that it motivates and inspires women and men in order to keep going to do it. And then when they learn the lesson, um, then they never put it on again. And I know for me, I lost nine kilos five years ago. And it's never gone back on. In three weeks, gone. Um, and I, I, you know, I would never have thought that. You know, I'm a nutritionist who does not believe in low fat, does not believe in calorie counting, and believes in losing weight slow. Here, this is what I was when I entered into this five years ago, and what I saw was something vastly different. And it just, it worked miracles for me. You know, I had sore back, sore hip thought I was going to have to have a hip operation. I had tightness in my throat, anxiety at three in the morning, um, foggy brain. And in seven days, most of my pain disappeared. Four and a half kilos down, water weight, it would have been. I was so puffed. I looked like a big puff ball. Uh, and, and then um, within 10 days, I had that uh, unbelievable euphoria in my brain. And look, I, I'm older, I was older than you, you know, I was hitting 50, so I had a little bit of time to probably build up toxicity. But more importantly, I did it a second time um, within two to three years of doing it the first time. In the first two weeks, lost nothing. In the third week, lost three kilos. And then um, had horrific migraines for five days, in bed for two days with it. And I'd had migraines for three decades, once a month, always got them. And I haven't had a migraine since that day that I had that cleaning out of the last couple of kilos of my weight, the last bit of toxicity. And I hear this. This isn't just me saying this. This is thousands of people that have followed me for the last five years doing this protocol who have been successful and, and, and done it the right way. But I've also learned along the way who and who shouldn't do this protocol. And I think that that's important that we perhaps discuss that now. Are you still got time? Are you doing all right at the moment? I actually have to go to work. <laughs> um, oh, it's been a work with you, and um, I hope everyone enjoys sort of hearing more of what Cindy has to say. I know she's going to answer a lot of the questions that have been raised. Um, but I want to say, you know, a personal like thank you. Like this has been an amazing experience for me, and. I'm really excited to sort of see how I'm um, transitioning through to phase four and um, will go for me. Um, but I'm going to obviously keep everyone posted on Instagram as to, as to the experience. Mm, I look forward to it too, Catherine. So we'll say bye to you, but I'll continue to talk so people get more information from me. And we'll, um, they'll have this recording um, to watch over and over again and if they have more questions we will answer it but I just want to say to you you're an inspiration I, I just was blown away when I 
I watched what you did and and how beautifully you reacted or not reacted but um, had a conversation with those people that were either inspired to do it themselves or were really having a go at you. So congratulations, you are um, you were very diplomatic. I must admit, you're 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 brilliant. Well, you know, I really do recognise that. Pretty much all the people who were who were feeling like having a negative reaction to it were doing it from a place of concern for me. Where you know, really like I'm really worried you're doing the wrong kind of diet. That this isn't going to be healthy for your body. Obviously, also concern for people then who are reading about it as well. But you know, it's it's not coming from from a negative place where they're being negative for the sake of being negative. They really just I haven't understood, you know, and maybe I didn't explain well enough the the reasoning behind what I was doing and sort of the science behind what I was doing. But hopefully you can address some of those issues um, and, and then I'll at least understand. But, you know, we're all going to um, to follow different paths and, and have different opinions and that's okay. Um, that's just life. Yeah. Makes it interesting. Bye. Okay, thanks, Cindy. Well, Bye, I said so to work. Bye. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll continue on here. Um, I've written some notes and I have some questions from people who were online when we had these technical difficulties. Uh, so we've already talked about um, the, um, the fat loss that happens and how it happens. So usually in that first couple of days you have water loss and, and that's, that just, I don't know, it just helps you keep going with the, the whole prospect of it. Um, and then you start to lose fat because the body starts to use fat um, in order to survive. And it's, um, it's an old evolutionary thing that we do. We would eat up in the summer, gain around five kilos of weight approximately. Um, if we were a female that um, was to be pregnant, we would get pregnant. And that five kilos of weight would help us through the lean months. Um, if we weren't pregnant, we'd still release that HCG and um, the fat would be immobilised from the stored fat cells that we'd stored in the summer and we'd come through to the winter. So that's why the foods are the winter foods of the hunter-gatherer without nuts and seeds. We've left all fat out and just put in lean meats um, as well as greens, lots of greens and those three fruits. It's um, well explained um, on the website um, to understand it. So what happens when we put on five kilos of weight um, in the summer? Or what happens when we put on five, 10, 15, 20 kilos of weight? If we put on those five kilos of weight, the fat cells produce a hormone called leptin. Leptin is um, uh, the master hormone. It's the hormone that is like your petrol gauge. It tells the body whether you're empty or filled um, and whether you need to eat or not eat. It interacts with all the other hormones and they could be your appetite hormones, which are ghrelin, insulin and glucagon. They could be um, your sex hormones, which are progesterone, estrogen and testosterone. They can affect your stress hormones. So they ha leptin has the ability to affect all of them in order for you to function and to perpetuate the human species. So let's look at the function of leptin when it's working on your appetite. So when you have around five kilos of weight, there'll be enough leptin to say, hey, I'm doing well, let's have babies and let's you know, go that way. If you go above five kilos and you keep going up, you produce more and more and more leptin until eventually what happens is you become leptin resistant. It's a bit like insulin resistance uh, in that the receptors that uh, are there for leptin close off and the leptin just keeps running through the blood system basically and um, it doesn't go on the receptors and the body's petrol gauge starts to break. So you keep filling and filling and filling the vehicle or your body with food it keeps packing away more fat, producing more leptin. You become more leptin resistant and you wonder you all, why are you always so hungry and you never have a stop gap. And so what we do is that we start to reduce the fat in the body, reduce the leptin in the body, and then um, you, your appetite starts to change. So not only are we affecting the fat cells, um, but we're also affecting the hormones that gauge how much food you need um, and also affects your hormones for appetite. 
The last thing that I think is important to address is uh, toxins that are in our fat. So let's go back to the hunter-gatherer. Let's go back to the evolutionary time when the hunter-gatherer probably didn't have a lot of toxins. But what they did have is that they, they would have had volcanoes erupting where there'd be lots of mercury in the air. That may fall into their water supply and the water might um, be filled with heavy metals. And it's not just mercury, there are other heavy metals. And they've, they've been on the planet forever. We can't make minerals or, or, you know, get rid of minerals. They're here on the planet. And um, so they would have been exposed to heavy metals. That exposure to heavy metals, if they couldn't get it out of the body through the gut with microbiomes taking that um, heavy metal and putting it out through fecal matter, or if it got into the blood system and the blood system was unable to get it out um, and through the liver or through urine, then it would be deposited into fat cells and it would be left there uh, until you were able to get rid of those, those fat, the fat out of the fat cells. So what would happen in the summer, you put the weight on, you might have some heavy toxicity and then in the winter, and we did this yearly, we would release all that fat along with the toxins as we could and then the whole cycle would start again. But we never have a winter. We never get rid of our fat anymore. We have toxins that are far greater than our hunter-gatherers ever had. And you can see this in cellulite. This is a very visual effect of a toxic fat. And so what we do is we put on this, um, we, put it, we put on this fat, we throw in the toxins, and then as we release those, that fat, the fat out of the fat cells, then those toxins are released. And I have to tell you, when you're on your last couple of kilos, that last three or four kilos is probably the most toxic fat. And the body is probably trying to um, hold that so that you, you don't get sick. So I want to give you an example of, of when I did it for the second time and I had that last three kilos to lose. And I've already explained to you that I was very sick in losing that last three kilos and with migraines and in bed. And I don't often get sick. Um, these days but this was a, a really hard time but I think what was happening is that, that that last bit of fat that I had had the most amount of toxins in it that was affecting me hormonally every time I had my menstrual cycle and there in turn I would get a migraine and this just was perpetuating it did for three decades until I took my body down to um, 57 kilos almost, I got down to. And, and to me, I was um, probably too skinny, um, but I had to get down there in order to get rid of that toxic fat. Now what I do is every two years, I make sure I do the protocol. I do it for three weeks and I just make sure I do it to make sure that any toxins that have come into my body, I can release. And even though I may go down a couple of kilos that I don't want to be down to, I soon put that weight back on again because um, my body is happy at around 59 kilos, usually at 59, 60. And you know what's really interesting is that every summer I put on a bit of weight, a couple of kilos, and every winter I take it off. And what was really interesting is this year we went um, from the north, southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere and I lost three kilos just like that. And, um, and I'm sure that my body is now in that ebb of flow because I eat seasonally as much as I can. I try not to eat tropical fruits and, and really fatty meats um, in the winter, but in the summer, I'm quite happy to eat those. They, they work. So these things all uh, work with our natural body. And for those people who don't agree with this protocol, uh, I would suggest that you um, give it a go and see what it does for you. But remember, if you are eating a junk food diet and you go on this protocol, you probably won't feel, you probably feel pretty bad throughout the whole protocol. But if you've been eating a fairly good diet and you're just wondering why you can't lose that weight and why you've got all these maladies happening, then you do this. You will be absolutely stunned as to what happens. So let's first talk about contraindications of doing this protocol. Number one, if you're pregnant, breastfeeding. I do not recommend this protocol because if you're releasing toxins, you're going to release them into the baby. 
If you do this before you get pregnant, and I recommend it six months before you get even think about getting pregnant that you do this, then that's okay. But do not do this while you're pregnant. Most of us dump a lot of our toxins into our firstborn because we are so toxic. So this to me is a wonderful thing to do before you get pregnant. But don't do it while you are pregnant. Second is breastfeeding. If you're breastfeeding, you're, you're releasing those toxins, that's going to go into the milk um, and then that will go into your baby. So be very, you know, wait. Wait until the baby is finished breastfeeding and then you may do this protocol. I also do not suggest it for athletes, especially athletes who are not prepared to stop exercising. If you're prepared to stop exercising for three weeks, then go for it. But if you're not, then what happens is that this wasn't what we did in the winter. Winters were as a time when we um, preserved our energy. We knew that we had to reserve. So the, the yoga is fine. What um, Catherine's been doing with yoga is fine. Walks are fine. But not where you are going out there and pumping iron and running a marathon and doing things like that. I, I don't recommend it. I also would suggest for people with diabetes, uh, thyroid conditions, um, things like that, that you might want a consultation with our nutritionists. And what we have is a $47 um, consultation for 30 minutes that you can have with them. And if they say, yes, we agree, you should, you, you can do the four-phase fat elimination protocol, then that $47 will come off the program. They may also say, look, we really think you should do the 21-step program first. Clean your diet up. Let's get you just, you know, cleaned out first before you go on this dramatic um, clean out. So they may suggest that. They may suggest the hunter-gatherer protocol or they may suggest um, that you have consultations with them because they see a problem. But that $47 will be used against each one of those, those programs. For me, the most dramatic effect was the four-phase fat elimination protocol. It, it gave me the most uh, amazing results even after doing um, seven-day juice cleanses every single year of my life. There was nothing as dramatic as, as the four-phase fat elimination protocol. Another thing that you need to be very careful of is if you have an eating disorder. If you've had bulimia or anorexia nervosa, um, I recommend that you have a nutritional consultation and I also recommend that um, like a lot of people go and get coached by Mel, my coach on this protocol, and they get coached by Mel and then um, they don't tell the Mel that they've had an eating disorder. So this is something that is important for you to tell the coach, number one, and number two, I recommend a nutritional consultation and then they may recommend something else. And we may only just slightly change the four-phase fat elim elimination protocol depending on where you are on, um, you know, how long you, you've not been a bosa or bulimia. Um, but yeah, we, we do we're a bit wary on, on that one because usually it's um, been an issue with people and then when you start them on a low calorie diet and you start weighing them, then um, they may have issues. We do have people who have had bulimia and nervosa and they go on the protocol but we don't want them to weigh themselves. We just ask them to just go on the protocol and then we suggest foods and we ask them how they feel rather than their weight. So did you get uh, an ache in your finger or did that headache come back or are you feeling irritable and annoyed or did you sleep well? So we ask them um, questions like this. So I, I would recommend that you go to Catherine's Instagram and you look at the food that she's posted, um, what she eats in a day and then you'll realise that it's, it can be quite a lot of food when it's greenery because there's not many calories in greenery. Um, but remembering that the, the protocol is looks like it's low fat, looks like it's low calorie, but remember your body is supplying the rest. Um, it will supply the rest. It knows how to keep you alive. It knows how to keep you survived. And, um, you know, we all have the, these issues and I did as a, diet, as a nutritionist. I thought, no, that's not the way it should be. But... I have to tell you, it was one of the best. All right, so um, I have some questions that people have been asking because we had so many technical problems, we couldn't get Catherine online, um, but we um, stayed online with people asking questions. So what does an average day program look like? This is from Yvonne. Yvonne, just go and have a look at um, our website or go onto Catherine's Instagram and she actually posts on there uh, what it's like. And if people are on here that don't know Catherine's Instagram, it's KD, 
inspired life um, on Instagram. Um, so calorie con control details. Yes, it's 500 grams. Um, uh, five, sorry, 500 um, calories. And, um, you know, we do that with meat, um, fish, chicken. We do it with lots of greenery. We do it with cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli and cauliflowers. Um, you, can, you can have tomatoes. You're allowed the winter fruits such as your citrus fruits, your apples, your um, berries. Berries are allowed on it um, as well as papaya. We put papaya on there because we find that it's wonderful for digestion. Uh, this is all handwritten. So, um, so medical conditions that relate to fat absorption. So I'm assuming digestive fat absorption. Any um, nutritionist can speak to about the program. Any nutritionist? Yes, we've we've addressed that. You can speak to um, our nutritionist. We have two nutritionists here at Changing Habits, and we do that via Skype. Um, so it's easy. That's from Katrina. Uh, the cost. Ooh, I should have looked that up. Um, just go to changinghabits.com.au or follow the, in, uh, the um, link on the um, profile of the Instagram of Katie Inspired Life and it will go through all of it. There's two ways that you can do this, this protocol. There's the basic, which is the book and the homeopathic drops. And then there is the one where you have the homeopathic drops with the book and all the information as well as you get the, the supplements, which are food-based supplements, which we've already talked about. So those food-based supplements are Camu Camu. Um, we also use um, the probiotics, um, the colloidal minerals and the greens. And that's to make sure that you're getting the nutrition that you need because you know what happens is the liver starts to detoxify. It actually needs vitamins and minerals in order to do that. It also needs chlorella. Um, and spirulina and so that's within the greens and it'll help the body detox chlorella is a wonderful uh, way to do that um, and we also put kelp in the green powder to make sure um, that you are getting uh, the iodine that you need because the body will use a lot of iodine through this process as well because the metabolism starts to um, metabolize all of these um, toxins that you might be releasing from the fat cells and um, you will use a lot of iodine. So we put the kelp in the green powder as well as I believe in, in the um, full pack, you also get the salt, which has also got the dulse in it, which is high in iodine and iron, a DHA and EPA. So this is one way you can get your EPA and DHA without using um, a fat. Um, Info about foods and when they get introduced back into the diet. Okay, so somebody wants to know information about how do we introduce foods back into the diet. Yes, we um, strictly tell you what to consume in phase four in the beginning. And the first thing you introduce is fat. You do not introduce carbs, you introduce fat. And we talk about the fats that you can introduce and you slowly do that. And then we go through each and every food group and, and to introduce that in. For me, my biggest issue was wheat. And I haven't eaten wheat for five years because every time I eat it, I get aches and pains. Um, I blow up, <laughs> I, I look puffy in one day. Um, and it's just something that I couldn't consume after. And that's what I figured out. And as a result of that, I became really interested because um, I did um, anthropology at the University of Colorado in Boulder. And we had been hunter-gatherers um, for many, many years, but then we became agriculturalists. And if you look at the Australian Aboriginals, um, the latest evidence has shown that they were probably agriculturalists for up to 45,000 years where they've been eating a grain, but that was a grain that was prepared properly. But anyway, I, I don't want to sidestep here, but I want to just let you know that after five years and all the research I've done, about two years ago, I decided to write, do a documentary on it and why wheat is such a problem for people. And so if you go to whatswithwheat.com, you'll see the trailer for our documentary that will be out in just over six to eight, six to seven weeks um, about what's happened to wheat and why so many people are having problems with it. Because, you know, when I went to school in the 60s and 70s, everybody ate wheat. Nobody had a problem with wheat. No, it, we'd never even heard of celiac disease. Um, so 
we do help you introduce these foods and what's right for you and what's not right for you. And what's interesting, what's right for me might be different for somebody else. So we help you through that. And then if you need more help, then our nutritionist will help you through it. But most people seem to be able to figure it out. Uh, did I also talk about people with gut issues? Um, make sure if you have a gut issue, such as bloating or FODMAPs or something like that, that you um, consult with our nutritionist first on the $47 program to make sure to see which program will be best for you. We are finding so many women, um, young women with gut issues, and we are creating a therapeutic program for women and men and children um, with these programs. But in the meantime, we always recommend GAPS, um, which is Gut and Psychology Syndrome by the beautiful Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. All right. Are you meant to do the 21 reset first? Well, some of you will need to do that first. Some of you who are eating a junk food diet um, and don't know much about food and nutrition and your body, we would recommend the 21 step reset first, then go and do um, the protocol. But like I said, go to the nutritionist, do the $47 um, program and, um, or a consult and they will recommend what they believe for you. Thank you, Yvonne, for, for that question. So, um, Melissa, I have chronic fatigue syndrome, take several vitamin supplements daily. Will my chronic fatigue prevent me from this daily course? Concerned about energy levels. Well, you, Melissa, you already have um, energy level problems and chronic fatigue syndrome is a result of your mitochondria not working anymore um, or being fatigued or just not doing what they're meant to be doing, which is making ATP in order for you to have energy. We want to get those mitochondria working again. Um, now, I would recommend that you have that $47 consult um, in order uh, to, um, to do this. You know, it's a, it's a no-lose situation. It's a win situation for you in that you will have um, be able to know which protocol that we think you should go on. Uh, and look, if it helps you with your chronic fatigue, but number one, we have to get your mitochondria working again. Uh, and that, that's important. I don't know what supplements you're taking, so I can't advise you on those supplements. I do know what my supplements are like because everything that is in my warehouse and, um, you know, I've been um, doing this for a long time and we've started the food because people couldn't find the foods that they wanted. So we have a food line as well. And everything that's in my warehouse is in my pantry. I don't get it in because it's a bestseller. I get it in because I want it and because my friends and family are wanting it and can't find the right one. Or um, I have clients that say, hey, you know, did you know that dates now are pollinated with wheat and there's wheat in our dates and, uh, and, and so on. So we do it because of these reasons. All right. Um, curious about makeup, skincare oils. Um, um, and a makeup artist and um, really I can't realistically remove makeup skincare um, from my life um, that in what impact will what impact will they have on the program all right we do not re recommend um, moisturizers or fat to go on the skin because the fat will absorb it so but what we do recommend is that um, there are certain oils that are have a larger molecular structure that you can put on your skin. And um, I have um, a wonderful company called, not my company, um, but somebody, another company called 28, and that's T-W-E-N-T-Y, the number eight, dot com. And they have made specifically um, skincare for my protocol. So you can, if you're very um, interested in this, you can actually buy the skincare from them. Um, and they use only essential oils and only um, use the fats that have the higher molecular formula. So Kristen, go and have a look at them. As far as makeup goes, um, not like most makeups don't have fat in them. I'm not sure about foundations, but if you use mineral makeup, you should be able to get away with that. Um, and, um, you know, I love lipstick. You can see lipstick on me. So um, I just, during that time, um, I did put lipstick on, you know, and it did not change anything. And I used a natural lipstick as well. So um, I hope that helps you, Kristen, in, in getting over that because there are people who don't want to not have makeup and love to have moisturisers on. You know, one thing I have to tell you is that I used to have to use moisturiser every day of my life. My skin was really dry. After doing the protocol, I haven't had that dry skin again. 
I remember I would go to the snow um, and to a high elevation where the air was very dry and I would be itching. I couldn't get in water. I'd be, it would be horrible. Now when I go to the snow um, or to a high elevation and there's a dry atmosphere, it makes no difference. I can go swimming um, in, you know, in heated pool. Um, I can go in the spas and I don't itch and scratch because my skin is so dry. Um, okay, so uni student, um, what are the costs? <laughs> we always ask that, don't we, Ariana, as a uni student? Um, you'll have to go online. I'm, it, isn't this terrible? I don't know the price of my own protocols. Um, I just do so much research and I leave that to somebody else. But I believe it's, you know, you've got American dollars over there and you're only paying us in Australian dollars. So you can imagine it'll be 30% off um, if you're paying in US dollars. And if you're on the English pound, then, you know, you, I think you're at 50% at the moment. So what says $300 here will only be £150 over there. So um, just look that up on the website. Go through the link that Catherine has put on her Instagram account and you will, um, you will see all the prices there for the starter pack as well as the full pack. And I do recommend the full pack, you know, because I, I know that um, it works the best. But if you're a student and you can only start do the starter pack, then it's a great it's a great way to do it. Uh, fat loss was about keeping insulin levels and blood sugar levels low. Why do you think human uh, HCG um, and not insulin that is the key hormone? All right, so I think I've explained that, Claire. Um, so HCG enables us to pull fat out of our stored fat. That's the idea of HCG. It's the survival of the, the mother and the baby and the survival of us in the winter. So it enables us to pull that out. out. Um, yes, insulin levels and blood sugar levels put lay fat down. So if you're insulin resistant and there's sugar running around your blood system, your blood system will convert it to a dry glyceride and your body will um, store it. So in the summer, we would eat saturated fats, which would reduce our insulin sensitivity, and we would eat sugary um, fruit, and combined together, that would um, help us store fat. But in the winter, when there was no fat around, so we wouldn't be insulin resistant, and there wasn't much sugar around except for the very low winter sugar fruits, then we wouldn't store it, we would use that energy. So you're using those sugars, but you're also using um, the fat. So look, it's complex. Um, and I'm sure, Claire, you know um, what you're talking about because you've asked these questions. So there is complexity in everything we do. And remember, leptin is the master hormone, which is regulating appetite, which is regulating insulin, glucagon, so storage of insulin or storage of sugar or release of sugar. It re, it's um, affecting all of our hormones. So it's not as simple as just insulin in there and, and nothing else. Um, are we actually using the hormone um, or a homeopathic version, which we are using the homeopathic version and we're not even using um, any hormone in there. We're using the energetic. So we've already talked about that. Success. Okay, Carolyn wants to know about the success. Do people gain weight back again? Yes, if you don't listen to what your body is telling you and you don't stick to the principles of phase four and then um, phase four ever, as we call it, then um, and you go back to your old ways, yes, you're going to gain the weight. You're there in the first place because you, um, you know, you've done these habits, you've eaten these foods and you have this weight and this health issue because of that. Um, and yes, there can be genetic markers and there can be all of those other things. So we have to, you know, look at that. If there are genetic markers, if you've, you know, you, you've been to 23andMe or you've been to um, all the other genetic places that you can find out whether you're processing or you haven't got enough B12 and things like that, then we can, we can work with that. But we can't work with somebody who thinks that it's just a, uh, a four-week program or a six-week program. We can't work with people like that and then they go back to their old ways because, of course, you're going to put the weight back on because what you did in the first place is why you were there in, the, you know, in that place in the, in the beginning. And as the old thing goes is that if you continue to do what you're doing right now, then you can continue to get the results you're getting. But if you do something different and continue that difference, then you will get a different result. 
Um, okay. So Carolyn, success. Um, okay, so that was Carolyn. I hope that answers that one, Carolyn. Um, does the body have natural limits to how much leptin it can produce? Well, um, we explained in the beginning that it was the fat cells that create the leptin. So the more fat cells you have, the more leptin you produce. And you will just keep producing that leptin. It's, it doesn't have, um, it has a program to tell you to stop eating if the receptors are working. But if the receptors aren't working, then you'll just keep laying down fat and putting more leptin in. And in actual fact, there are drug companies around the world that are trying to figure out how they can create um, a drug based on leptin in order to, for people to lose weight. And I don't think they've come up with anything yet, but hold this space, they may do that. But I'm not waiting around for a drug. I'd like to do it naturally. All right, so that's that one. So um, force the body to produce more leptin uh, long term. Force the body to produce more leptin. Oh, I actually force the body to produce more leptin. Oh, sorry. Okay, so Hannah, you said, does the body have natural limit to how much leptin it can produce? Can your program actually force the body to produce more leptin long term? But we don't want it to be producing more leptin. We want it to have an ebb and flow where it produces leptin um, that keeps the body at a constant monitored um, weight. So around the five kilos um, or under, and um, and and the body knows what you're meant to be doing. So the leptin that you will um, the leptin that you will be producing will not be, and you won't have that resistance as long as you're in that five kilos of what we call a perfect weight, which. I, look, I believe is a bit, bit of there is no perfect weight, but there is a weight range that we should be in. So as long as you're in that weight range, you won't be producing a, a lot of leptin, you won't be leptin resistance, and therefore your body will tell you when to stop eating. See, it's not about willpower. It's actually about the body's need to survive. And when it doesn't think there's enough leptin in there, it will keep telling you to eat more and more and more. I hope that makes sense, Hannah. Can the body produce any more leptin besides taking a hormone? Not really sure what that one is, but I hope I've answered it. Does hormone have any effect um, on somebody taking the contraceptive pill? No. And um, it, it's a homeopathic. Uh, and, and like we talked about before, uh, there are many medical um, doctors and there are many people who are online on um, Catherine's Instagram who says homeopathics are just BS. Well, if you think it's BS, then it's not going to affect anything and it's not, you know. I look, I find this whole argument about um, homeopathic working and not quite amusing because if someone's taking homeopathic and they go to their doctor and they said, I'm taking this homeopathic and, they ho and, the, and they've got an illness, the doctor will blame the homeopathic. But if the homeopathic is helping in some way, then it's a placebo. So um, you can take it or leave it um, with what you believe about homeopathy, but just know that medicine uses energy to diagnose, not to heal. So why can't we use energy to heal? This, I hope you um, get my drift on that one. Uh, is hunger more psychological than anything else? Um, energy traveling to the brain. No, I don't think it's psychological. I think the body knows when to be hungry and not to be hungry. And I think I've explained that quite well, how leptin does that with hormones. So, no, I don't think it's a psychological thing at all because if it was psychological, we would never have survived millions of years to get to this point in time. Why can't you work out vigorously? Because we're going back to the winter of the hunter-gatherer. We want to... Um, mimic what that hunter-gatherer would do and we want to make sure that you're not stressing the body in exercise as well as trying to detox. You remember as you're releasing fat in this toxic world you will be releasing toxicity. We want to give the body the, it, the energy in order to do that as opposed to working out madly. You can walk, you can do yoga, you can do things like that but try not to work out um, vigorously. And how does the hormone help with insulin resistance. Well, insulin resistance um, has to do with leptin, has to do with the sugar that you're consuming. So the HCG 
directly doesn't have anything to do with insulin resistance. But by healing the body and by not eating sugars and refined foods and basing your diet more on, carbo uh, on um, fats and proteins with some carbohydrates in there as well and leafy greens, then the body starts to heal itself. I've, I've never believed that anything can cure a body like food. And I've never said that we can cure anything, but what we can do is that we give the resources to the body what it needs in order to be its best. And if you're feeding it breakfast cereals and low-fat milk and McDonald's hamburgers and Kentucky Fried Chicken and pastas and um, refined foods and packaged shelf-stable foods, then you are not feeding it the right resources. We have never in our evolution ever eaten those foods and our bodies have not adapted to those foods and we're getting sicker and sicker as a result of it. Feed it the right resources, give it the nutrients it needs, it will look after itself. But having said that, we have some people who are in extreme illness. And these are people with gastrointestinal problems where we need to take them to the ketogenic diet in order to get them well. And they may need to stay on that and become fat burners in order to get rid of their insulin resistance for quite some time before they can start to eat um, significant carbohydrates again. But these are, these are questions answered by my nutritionists. These are the ones that are the specialists at this. They will know whether you're a sugar burner or a fat burner or why you're always hungry. And if you are always hungry, you are a sugar burner. So um, we want to get you into fat burning stage because then you'll find that you'll eat, um, say, protein and fat in the morning with some greenery and some tomatoes and pesto and avocado and eggs and this is what I have in the morning. And I think it's um, like it's three, 4.40 here um, where I am right now. And um, my daughter made me uh, what we call a turmeric keto um, dandelion. Um, which has fat in it um, and the dandelion root coffee with some turmeric and some black pepper. And that's all I've had since I woke up this morning. I have no hunger. It's just not there because I burn the fat that I'm consuming as opposed to eating heaps and heaps of carbohydrates. And this is what I've learned as a result of doing this protocol. But I'm five years on, remember. And I've learned so much about my body and started to listen to my body and understand what it needs. And, and when you stop eating the junk foods, you start eating these amazing um, new um, real foods that we have eaten for thousands of generations without the problems of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity, autoimmune diseases, um, autism, Asperger's, depression, schizophrenia, and I could uh, go on. All right. Um, at all. Does the homeopathic treatment affect hormones at all? What affects your hormones is you reducing your fat, increasing your leptin, and then going on from there. But having said that, if you have a hormonal issue, I would recommend the $47 consult with my nutritionist to make sure you're doing the right um, uh, protocol. And last one, how does the homeopathic treatment affect you if you take the birth control pill? Which that was Ariana, and I think I've already answered that. It doesn't have any effect on the birth control um, pill whatsoever. So, but what will have is when you start to get well, that will start to change things. And, um, oh, look, you wait and see. If you do this properly and um, you do it like Catherine has done it, and you stick to the principles and you become organized and um, it, it, like it's life-changing. And, and like I said, in more ways than one. And as a 50-year-old woman, I'm now heading into 56, but as a 50-year-old woman, it absolutely changed the course of the next three decades of my life. If I live to 80, 90 or 100, it has changed the course of, of my life. I'm, I'm from a family that's died young. I lost my mother and my sister both to cancer. Um, I have hemophilia in my family, type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, dysphagia, breast cancer, three of my aunts, liver cancer, um, stroke, I, like you name it, it's in my, um, my mother's family and um, my family. 
And I decided that I wasn't going to go down that track and that I would make the changes that I needed to do in order to be healthy, strong, and live as long as I need to live, but healthy and strong, and not have what has happened to my whole family. Um, it's, it's just a choice that we make, and it's the way I want to live, and um, I want to thank Catherine um, for being an inspiration to me again because I haven't talked much about the four-phase fat elimination protocol um, in a long time and sometimes you forget what has made the changes that um, created such a big change in my life and I just want to thank her that she's inspired me again to start talking about it and and let people know that this is something that um, changes lives if done properly and continued on in phase four forever. So I want to thank you all for listening in. I don't know how long I've been going for. I haven't been watching the time. Normally I'm watching the time and I only go for an hour. I have another webinar to give for my um, Changing Habits online nutrition course. It's a 12-month course that I give. So um, I've got another webinar to give in a couple of hours, so I might give my voice a rest. Um, and if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to call our team, um, email our team, uh, ask a Catherine. Um, but please go on Catherine's Instagram, KD Inspired Life. Um, follow her. She's an inspiration and I want to thank her very much. And happy changing habits, everybody. Bye for now.